missed you so much and I trust that you also missed me because how can you not? You may notice that today I'm sporting a different hairstyle. It's a bit of a half up, half down look. That is because after editing my face for 10 hours the last time, I realized that I have the worst flyaways <laughs> known to mankind. And I feel like this might be a nice little way to cover them. <laughs> Probably not, but we'll see. I thought I needed another challenge today, see if I can redeem myself. So I will show you what I'm gonna make. My boyfriend got this shirt for free. He doesn't want to wear it. Can't imagine why not. I am gonna try and make, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to do this at all, but I'm gonna try and make a matching like shirt and skirt set. So I'm gonna try and crop the shirt and also obviously the skirt. And then my plan is to do as little sewing as possible. So I kind of want to just try again at the um, elastic ruching, see if I can redeem myself. Hopefully I can, so let's do it. Has anyone else been really emotional during quarantine? Because I was driving here, the radio was on and <laughs> Castle on a Hill by Ed Sheeran was playing. And I teared up big time. Like that song just hit a nerve today for some reason. I already cut this shirt like way too short. I'm gonna start with the skirt because I just know that that's gonna be the hardest part. Sometimes we just gotta try these things in life, don't we? So you may notice this beautiful green beverage that I have in front of me. It's an iced matcha latte. And a couple of months ago, I decided that I wanted to try and make a matcha at home because these things are just always so expensive at cafes. It makes literally zero sense. So I bought this tub of matcha powder and I woke up in the morning and I made a matcha and I just made it normal. Like I didn't do anything weird and it tastes really, really good. And then I suddenly get this like pang of hunger, but it's not normal hunger. It's like unbearable hunger. Like I need to get up off the couch and go to the kitchen right now or I'm gonna pass out. And so I get up and I start like cutting up mushrooms for my breakfast. All of a sudden I feel so sick. So I run to the bathroom and I am Violently ill from matcha. Like, apparently, some people just don't process matcha well on an empty stomach, which. <laughs> so, now when I have a matcha, I have to have it either with food or right after I eat food, otherwise, I will vomit everywhere. <sighs> Alright, so this is the big moment that I'm very scared for because this is where I f***ed up in my last video is threading the elastic through. I'll tell you something I'm mad about and take this very seriously. This is really serious actually. I feel like you kind of have to live under a rock to not know that Miley Cyrus's new boyfriend is the one and only Cody Simpson. Now, <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm mad about this. I'm not mad that they're actually dating. What I'm mad about is that I loved him when no one else did. And I know that people say this, people are like, oh, I discovered Justin Bieber when he was busking on the streets of Vancouver. Like, no, you didn't, shut up. This though is different, I promise. It really is different. There's gonna be one less lonely. One day when I was 11 or 12, my sister pulled out her flip phone and she showed me this song. And it was a heavily auto-tuned song by this like child who sounded like a child. And it was none other than Cody Simpson. It was his first song called One. All we need is one, one, one. All we need is one, one. Not to interrupt myself, but we have ruching and I'm very excited about it. So after hearing that recording and finding out just a little bit about his personal life, I found out that he was a swimmer and I was also a swimmer. He was also born on my best friend's birthday and for some reason that made me feel so connected to him. And the love like did not fade either. Up until I was maybe 16, I was obsessed with him. I made a, <laughs> I made a Cody Simpson Twitter fan account where I posted facts about him. I'm pretty sure some random German like gave me that account because I was very in with the fandom community. The fan <laughs> fandom community. <laughs> She probably saw that I was commenting on all of Cody Simpson's shit and she was like, babe, do you want this Twitter account? And I was like, do I want to be the number one online source for Cody Simpson facts? Absolutely. All my friends said that he looked like a naked mole rat and I was just really upset by that. You know? And so I kind of felt like I was fighting for him throughout my entire adolescence. Like I just wanted people to see how like gorgeous he was, how lovely he was, all of that kind of shit. And 
now that he is dating Miley Cyrus, the whole world seems to think that he's gorgeous and funny and like humanitarian and he's a poet. And I'm like, I was there first when nobody else cared and now all of you little haters are pretending to love him because he's dating Hannah Montana and I'm just really over it. Speaking of Cody Simpson, when I was like 14 in the midst of my absolute like frenzy for him, I made my mum drive me to this shopping mall that was like an hour away from our family home because he was performing for free there. Clearly he was really famous at the time. And I wrote this, <laughs> oh my God, it hurts me to think about this. I wrote him this letter, which in my mind was gonna make him love me. The letter basically said, Cody, I'm not like the other fangirls. I know you. Like, I know that you were a swimmer. I know your sister's name. I know your birthday. And then the cherry on top is that when I was at the concert, I had the letter in an envelope. I throw the letter on stage, but I'm like halfway down the mosh pit. So it just like lands two meters in front of me on some girl's head. And it like hurts me to think about <laughs> the cleaner or whoever had to find my letter. How was your day, Daddy? It was great, um, but I found Cody Simpson's stalker and I'm gonna take this letter to the police. With like being a crazy fan like that, I feel like everyone split down the middle. Like you didn't just love One Direction, you had an entire One Direction shrine on your wall in your bedroom or you didn't like them. Guys, are you ready? I slayed it, I absolutely slayed it. I mean, it's not cute, but I did it. Yes! I'm just gonna sew up that gap and then the skirt is done and I nailed it. So my top and my skirt are done and I was hoping that I'd have some extra fabric to make a little scrunchie. I don't have any matching fabric, but I do have <laughs> this beautiful pink silk fabric, which I feel like it's not a perfect match. How are you coping with this quarantine? Because I feel like when I first went into quarantine and obviously like lost my work and stuff, I was really devo. I was just really emo. It comes in waves though. Last week I was a bit eh, and then this week I'm thriving. If you're feeling good, just like do as much productive and fun shit as you can so that when you are in like the emo zone you can also just lean into that and just chill and feel sad and relax and then when you feel good you can be productive again so in case you're wondering how to make a scrunchie it's so easy you just cut out a giant rectangle which that is not a rectangle so i need to make it a bit more rectangular the measurements are meant to be something like three and a half inches that way and then like 21, 18 to 21 this way. I don't measure it anymore. <laughs> and then you need a piece of elastic, that thin piece of elastic, this width, which I think is a quarter of an inch, maybe? I don't do inches. Measure around your wrist, but then you want to have a little bit extra so that you can tie it in a knot. So the other day I was at home and two police officers knocked on my door. And like, that is literally the first time this ever happened to me in my entire life. And a little backstory about me. I hate authority. I've always been really scared of like getting in trouble. I hate principals, teachers, police. And I opened the door and thank God they were just like looking for the person who used to live in this apartment and I didn't do anything wrong, which is great. But my mind immediately jumped to like, oh my God, they're checking in on everyone in Sydney, checking that they're socially isolating and stuff, which is the most extra thing to assume. Like as if police officers are gonna go to every single person's house and check on them. She's definitely a chunky girl, but this is her. So this is the finished product. And I feel like I kind of nailed it. Like, obviously I'm not gonna wear this out of the house because I look like I'm wearing a tourist Halloween costume, but I did exactly what I said I would do. I did a crop top with this elasticated waist. Is the execution perfect? No, the hem is absolutely shocking and the shirt is way too short for me. But again, like I'm gonna take that small win. I feel like this scrunchie is kind of cute. I mean, she's a little bit thick, but who isn't during quarantine. <laughs> so anyway, that is it from me. I posted about this YouTube channel on my Instagram story, which was literally the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my entire life. But 
people did not react the way that I thought they would. Like I was expecting to get absolutely roasted. And instead, people were so nice to me. So I feel really happy about that. Thank you again for watching and- Don't forget to subscribe.